Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to two of my members, Samir Zaki and Black Pen Red Penny. Forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members get to see the thumbnail before the video premieres and they're also giving shout outs in my videos. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about an equation of dn. d sub n is actually a function that is responsible for the number of divisors of an integer. So dn represents number of divisors of n. And we want to find the smallest integer n for which the number of divisors is 12. In other words, we want to find the smallest integer with 12 divisors. So let's take a look at some problems. For example, how about 4? How many divisors does 4 have? Well, it has 1, 2, and 4. So the answer is 3. D of 4 is 3. How about 10? Well, 10 is divisible by 1, 2, 5, and 10. So 10 has 4 divisors. So basically, every number has, uh, you know, every integer, obviously, a positive integer, uh, can be used with this function and is defined for those numbers. But we want to reverse the process. That's what makes this problem actually more interesting because we're not interested in finding the, the d of n of a number, but we want to know the number whose d of n is 12, and that's the smallest because there are infinitely many integers for which this is true, and you'll see that in a little bit. Okay, great. So let's see how we can tackle this problem. First of all, I'm going to give you an idea about how to find the number of divisors without listing them all because listing is not practical. What if they gave you... 25 million, are you going to list all the divisors? I don't think so, right? I mean, you can try it, but, you know, that's going to take forever. Great. So let's take a look at an example. For example, um, how about 4? Let's take a look at 4. Well, 4 can be written as 2 to the second power. That means any divisor of 2 to the second power needs to be in this form, 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, or 2 to the power 2. So that gives you three divisors. Easy, right? So how do you get there? Let's do look at 10. Well, 10 can be written as 2 to the first times 5 to the first. And as you know, any divisor of 10 is going to contain 2 or 5 or both or none of them. So it could be like 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1 with 5 to the power 0, 5 to the power 1. We have two lists and we, we have to pick an integer from each list. That gives us 2 times 2, which is 4 options. Now, here's where this comes from. You look at the exponents in the prime factorization and increase each one by one, and then you get the number of divisors. So in the case of four, since there's only one prime, you take the largest power, which is second power, and increase by one, and you get the three, which is d of four. And in this case, it's one plus one multiplied by one plus one, and these ones come from here. Okay, great. So that's how we find the number of divisors of an integer. Now, here's the question. How do you reverse this process? Well, you look at the number and you factor it. So we're going to go ahead and factor 12. We're going to start by factoring 12 and then looking at different ways to factor it. And remember, our goal is to find the smallest n that satisfies this. Great. So 12 can be factored in a couple different ways. For example, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. This also shows you that d of 12 is 6, but we don't really care about that right now. Now, what does 1 times 12 mean? Well, it just means that the, when you increase the exponents by 1, you get 1 and 12. So if you decrease these numbers by 1, you get the exponents. So suppose p, q, r are prime numbers. And we can write this as p to the power 0 times q to the power 11. Think about this number for a minute. You have something like p to the power 0, which doesn't really matter because it's 1. Or you have something like 2 to the power 11, for example, right? Well, how would you find uh, the number of divisors of this number? You're just going to take the exponent and increase by 1, and that's going to give you 12. That's what I'm talking about. So that's how we reverse the process. But notice that 2 to the power of 11 is 2048. What? Is that the smallest number? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and take a look at 2 times 6. Okay. Well, obviously, if you used 3 to the power of 11, that's going to be even larger, so don't even go there. 2 to the power of 6. Now, how do you reverse the process? So I know of d of n. I need to find n. You take the numbers that are um, the factors, decrease each one by one, and use them as exponents. P, Q, R are the basis, right? So I have something like P to the first and Q to the fifth, because two and six are one more than one and five, right? But this gives you a bunch of options. For example, I could do two to the first times three to the fifth, 
or I can do 3 to the 1st with 2 to the 5th. And here's an important fact. If you use the smaller prime with a larger exponent, it's better because your number will be smaller. For example, take a look at this one. This is 243 times 2, which is 486. That's a three-digit number, obviously better than 2048. But can we improve on this? And we can. 2 to the 5th times 3 is going to be 96. And there you go. That's a two-digit number. Huge improvement, right? But are we going to stop here? No, because maybe 3 times 4 is going to give us something better. So we have to keep looking until we're sure that there is no better way to do it. So 3 times 4 can be broken down as p to the second times q to the third. And we're going to be looking at different options how this works out. So I can use, remember, we decreased by each number by 1 to get the exponent, but now I'm going to replace p and q with primes. And remember our list of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7. You don't really have to go far out because obviously if you go to 11, 13, they're going to give you very large results. So we have to stay you know, somewhere here, maybe 2, 3, 5 at most. So let's use 2 to the second, 3 to the third. But remember, we talked about this. This is going to give you something better. Let's check it out. 4 times 27 is 108. Uh-oh, it's even worse than 96. So I don't want that. I don't want any of these. 96 is the best one so far. But this one is going to give you 72, and it's even better. Here's the million dollar question. Can we improve on this and get something smaller than 72? If that's the case, we have an answer. If that's not the case, then 72 is the answer. So let's take a look. And so the question is, can we find a smaller number with 12 divisors? And the answer is yes. But you have to think outside the box a little bit. Instead of using two factors, we must use three factors. Why? Because distributing the 12 over more exponents is going to keep our number smaller. Because remember, the base is not it doesn't make a huge difference, but the exponents make a huge difference because exponents are powerful, okay? You know what I'm talking about, right? Powers and powerful. Great, so how can I do 12? 1 times 1 times 12? No, I don't want to use 1 because that just indicates 0 power. So I want to do 2 times 2 times 3. And this is just awesome. You'll see in a little bit why. Okay, this indicates p to the power 1, q to the power 1, and r to the power 2. Awesome. Why is this good? Because we're keeping the exponent real small as opposed to fifth, third, we're using first and second powers. So hopefully it's going to give us something nicer. Let's test it out. Well, since p, q, and r are distinct primes, I didn't write it, but hopefully that's understood, we can just use 2 to the first, 3 to the first, or and 5 to the second. This is going to give me 25 times 6, which is 150. Uh-oh, that's a three-digit number. I don't want that. How about switching these numbers around? Like, how about using... 2 and 5 with 3 to the second. Hey, I'm just delaying the solution, right? Because I already told you straight, but let's just test it out. It's fun. 9 times 10 is 90. Okay, better, but still worse than 72. How about this one using the 3 and 5 with the first powers and 2 with the second power? Remember, keep the base small and exponent large. So this is going to give you 15 times 4, which is 60. Now, is there another way to factor 12 into 3 or more factors such that each factor is greater than 1? No, there's no other way. So this is going to be the smallest. So in other words, if d of n is equal to 12, then the smallest n is going to equal 60. All right. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.